Well, it's Tuesday. It is. And that means we're back in the attic, so to speak. We're, we're in the attic room, but it's the collector's attic. <laughs> All part of Garage Mahal. We're back looking at some more miniature jukeboxes. And boy, do we have a lot of miniature jukeboxes mm -hmm. because I've just been collecting them my whole life and I love the little things. But let's do some more of these Italian, very hard to find in the States and kind of rare on their own right. But they're, I think the, the, the coolest, the neatest uh, reproduction miniature jukeboxes that have ever been made. They're just, and they're pretty reasonably priced. They're just difficult to find because you're probably only going to find them in Italy or Spain. Wow. Which is the only place they were ever sold. They were never hmm. imported to the United States. But they're there on eBay. This week I want to look at a few of the post-war machines. Oof. Check this guy out. Is that something? This is the Packard Manhattan. Wow. Isn't that a neat looking machine? Those are cool. And those, I actually remember those. There were a few in old restaurants when I was a kid. They were considered to be very elegant. Yes. And so they popped up. They were more expensive, mm -hmm. but they popped up in more luxurious restaurants, hotels, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, who said they would not have a jute box, which is a very demeaning term, a jute box. This was a coin-operated musical instrument. Right. And so just, but it, it still <laughs> plays 78s. It's the exact same thing. Right. But just a bit more elegant looking mm -hmm. of a machine, 1946. Right. So wow. here, right after the war, hmm. there's that brief period just before the war and just after the war when they made light up jukeboxes. Right. They were only made for about, not counting the war era, about three years before the war, about three years after the wow. war, and then they were gone. Yeah. And we think of them as such an icon, but they really right. weren't made that long. Hmm. Here's a fun one. This is a Seaberg trash can. <laughs> it looks just like There's, a trash can. I also call it R2-D2. <laughs> oh, Oscar the Grouch is home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Seaberg actually invented uh, the light-up jukebox. Right. But then Paul Fuller over at Wurlitzer took the ball and ran with it and stole everybody's thunder. And from that point on, everybody was, was chasing Wurlitzer. Oh. But right after the war, Seabird came out with this and they made it three years. And each year they made it a little bit different. This is the second year, you can tell because of the top and a few different things. And I actually have a full size. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's been damaged because it got stolen. Hey, along with the gas pump. Along with the gas pump in the big burglary. <laughs> right. And I was walking through an antique store 10 years later and mm -hmm. there was there my jukebox. box. There it is, right. So, uh, bought it, it mm -hmm. had to buy it. Then I had to negotiate with the darn insurance company. It says, we hear you got that back. Long story. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's back in it, but it's, they busted it up pretty bad. The Just over there in the other it. room. We've got it locked up tight. So It's yeah. locked up tight, and I've, got, I've collected all the parts mm. I need, so I'm going to put this guy back together. <laughs> but this is the Seaberg 148. That is just cool. And they're just neat, and they're all over the place. Uh, if you really wanted to, to find and restore your own jukebox, the parts are readily available. Well, that's the, good. The jukeboxes are all over the place because they were very, very popular. And uh, I just saw two of them on, on eBay in restorable condition, one for wow. 250 oh. and one for 300 Oh, my goodness. So They're around. Very affordable. They're mm -hmm. worth about two grand once they're all fixed up. Not the little one, of course. No. This little guy's worth about 40 bucks. I'm not sure a Barbie doll. And even even this one's worth a little bit less than the other collectibles <laughs> for some reason. Maybe goes for uh, 30, 30 bucks, something like that. Now we're back to another Wurlitzer. Another favorite of mine. And this is just a gorgeous machine. Mm -hmm. Again, post-war, the Wurlitzer model 1080, uh, just a little, you know, right after the, the 1015, mm -hmm. this was their next model. Surprisingly, they didn't do very well. Really? They didn't sell too terribly well because we were getting toward the close of the light-up era. Oh. Also, the 1015 was so successful that everybody had one. They didn't really want to get rid of one. And so Wurlitzer found that it was a little bit harder to sell these. But a little more elegant than a 1015. And so some of the, the nicer hotels and restaurants were willing to put these in. Hmm. This is the model 1100, or let's say a model 1100, uh, wildly heralded as the last of the light up jukeboxes, 1949. Wow. And uh, most of these were destroyed hmm. because they couldn't sell them. That's crazy. And there were two reasons why they couldn't sell them. 
one, everybody that wanted a jukebox had a 1015. Ah. And Seberg released the Model 100, the mm -hmm. one that you see on Happy Days. Right. Played 45s. Yes. This plays 78s. Mm -hmm. That one has 100 selections. This has 23 or 24. Right. Nobody wanted these. So they're around. You can mm -hmm. find them because some of them got sold, but the majority of them were destroyed right in the factory. Oh, they, my. They just couldn't sell them. Yeah. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Our next phase of uh, miniature jukeboxes from Italy, from Fabri Editori. Wow. And, and you can go to eBay and try to find some of these. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting the name of the company, the eBay store, that generally has these. He's, okay. he's in Italy. And he's always looking for these, and, and he buys them and, and sells them. And you can buy them brand new mm -hmm. off of uh, his store quite often. He doesn't have all of them, and there's two of these that he says he's never even seen. Wow. Of the 34 that were originally made. That's crazy. Well, if you haven't <laughs> been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, mm -hmm. but it helps us out, and it'll help you out because it gives you notification if you click your little notification bell, and then whenever we upload something, which is at least a couple of times a week and sometimes mm -hmm. more, you never know about us, uh, and you want to be notified. So subscribe and then click your notification bell. And the easy way to subscribe is with the blue button, zinc, right there. Subscribe. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in a few days mm -hmm. with the regular show. Right. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.